2024 is going to be a big year. Yeah, I think now is the time to buy Bitcoin. I really do. I think this could be one of the last big bull cycles that we see. Today, I sit down with crypto expert Guy Turner, host and founding member of Coin Bureau, as he shares his 2024 forecast for the crypto market. We talk price potential of Ethereum. The tokenomics have, have changed so much. And now, you know, the more the more Ethereum gets used, the more ETH gets burned and therefore, you know, the less there is available. Guy's best advice for winning in a bull market. So this is something I learned from the last cycle. As well as five altcoins on his radar, he sees the most growth potential. Okay, five on my radar. I'm still I'm still very bullish on... By the way, two of these altcoins I had not heard of yet. I, I love this. And something I love about having you on the channel is you give me high cap and low cap, you know, and stuff for the audience to do more research into. I'll have to look into those, especially the low cap. Like the video if you like collabs like this. And let's start, Guy, your general 2024 outlook for crypto. 2024 is going to be a big year, I think. Um, if, it, if everything goes as it's kind of expected to go and we get ETF approval in January, that will that will be great for the market. We'll see, uh, you know, we'll see, I think we'll see big price, uh, you know, big price action for, for Bitcoin. And I think that will eventually feed into ETH and altcoins. So a spot ETF will definitely, I think, you know, pump the market. Another thing to look out for, I think, is in March when SBF is sentenced. Now, obviously, he's been found guilty. That chapter is kind of closing. But I do think that could be a big moment that, you know, we get that sort of final closure on SBF. He's sent off to prison for however long. And I hope that that moment sort of changes people's outlook on crypto because, you know, this has been such a such a huge story. It, it, when you when you step out of the crypto bubble, everyone else, they're only you know, the only thing they're really aware of uh, when it comes to crypto is is FTX and Sam Bankman Fried. And I think hopefully putting that to bed, so to speak, um, will be a moment where people sort of focus, you know, on on more positive aspects of crypto. We should hopefully have an ETF by that point. Um, and then, of course, uh, the following month, April, is when the halving is scheduled to happen. Um, and historically, this has been a narrative that mainstream media are kind of better able to understand with Bitcoin. You know, the supply gets cut in half. So those supply and demand dynamics come into play. That is a fairly easy narrative to understand it's a fairly easy narrative to report on so i would hope what with a potentially uh you know most likely spot etfs available for bitcoin sam bankman fried uh not not troubling us for for many decades to come and you know the halving i would i i would think that should hopefully change the narrative around bitcoin and crypto more widely and i think that is when you know we can start really sort of dreaming of uh, of a proper bull market coming around to me in a lot of ways 2024 could be the perfect storm blackrock etf is that demand shock the bitcoin having is that supply shock perfect storm do you think mm -hmm. that this may be one of the last great bull runs for crypto, because after BlackRock, that is mass adoption. They're the largest asset manager who's left. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I've I've heard this. I've heard a few people uh, say this theory that you know eventually, what with what with things like ETFs, what with tradfi products, what with increased regulation, uh, and what with greater adoption. And I think understanding of what crypto is, I think inevitably it is going to become a more uh, a more traditional, a more sedate asset class over time. The reason crypto is so crazy, uh, has been so crazy for many years, the reason you see these wild price swings, especially in altcoins, is that no one really knows how to value these projects. Like There's a huge amount of potential. But no one really knows what you know if that potential is going to translate into anything, and if it does, what it could actually be worth. So we've seen these, you know, we've seen this absolutely mad price action over the years, and I think we're still sort of in that phase at the moment. We're still in this discovery phase. But as you as you say, as as ETFs come along and as regulations come along as well, I think the sector is going to cool. Well, it's going to become less exciting. 
is going to become less frothy. We're still going to see amazing projects developing. We're still going to see you know, money coming into it. And I think we're going to see crypto become more and more a part of everyday life. But I think the payoff of that is that it does become less crazy. So yeah, I think this could be one of the last big bull cycles that we see. And after that, it becomes a little more a little more palatable for um for you know kind of regular mom and pop investors perhaps and by the way just to relate this to our grandparents and parents generation all our grandparents had to do is buy property do make one good choice in their life buy property and hold for the rest of their lives they turn out great our parents went through the internet bubble um obviously you had to learn a lot more but you know, learn as much as you can about the internet, take advantage and hold. But even with the internet, while the bubble, the biggest peak of them all happened in 99, 2000, whenever that was, the real apps, the real opportunity, the Facebooks, the YouTube wasn't invented until 2005 compared to 1999, yeah. 2001. So it's not like the innovation stops. Yeah. Yeah, we 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 are at the beginning. It's a meme, isn't it? It's a it's a cliche of crypto. Is is, is we're we're still early, but we are. You know, we're still kind of figuring out what all this is and what it can do. And yeah, that the the, uh, the dot com bubble is is the perfect example. You know, we, we had this new technology come along. Everyone was really excited about it, but no one really knew what it was, what it could do. No one really even appreciated. I think everyone kind of got excited, but didn't almost sort of underestimated what it was going to be. And then it kind of went, then the bubble burst. A lot of people lost a lot of money. A lot of people were, you know, pretty, pretty traumatized by it. And as you say, eventually it kind of, it, it sort of reinvented itself a little bit and and came back as, as something rather different um, and went on to be, you know, the biggest, the biggest growth sector of, you know, we've ever seen. So yeah, we're still sort of at that stage with crypto. I think we're still figuring out what exactly it is that uh, that it's going to do. I don't want you to give financial advice with this next question, but this will be one of the most ask asked questions, including now in the future and now, is now mm -hmm. the time to buy Bitcoin. What would you do? Uh, yeah, I think now is the time to buy Bitcoin. I really do. I bought some. I bought some myself recently. I topped up my my stack a few days ago. Um, obviously, I wish I <laughs> wish I'd done it sooner. Maybe when it was chopping around sort of twenty five k and no one was really uh, no one was really interested or paying attention. Um, but then suddenly this ETF narrative came along and um, and caught a lot of people, myself included, by surprise. But yeah, look, we've got big institutional players lining up. And the reason that they're lining up is because their clients want it. BlackRock is BlackRock is filing for a spot Bitcoin ETF because its clients have asked them for it. Uh, and ditto all these other as asset managers as well. There is huge pent up demand for Bitcoin. And when these ETFs launch, they may not be, you know, out of the gates, they may not be kind of what everyone's expecting. I, I'm not sure if we would kind of shoot to new all time highs straight away. But yeah, over time, more and more people are going to want exposure to Bitcoin. There is a lot of money sitting there that will eventually get allocated to Bitcoin. And I think you know, we will look back and go, do you remember when Bitcoin was, was below 40K? Wow. You know, so I think I think now is is perhaps as good a time as any. And if you were buying Bitcoin for the first time, again, I'm just talking about what you would do. Um, mm -hmm. Do you put it all in at once or for pe the people asking, oh, I, I'm trying to wait for a bigger dip? Like, what would be your strategy if you were buying for the first time all at once a little bit? I think probably in in order to keep your keep your sanity and and not sort of be constantly refreshing the Bitcoin charts, I would I would just DCA. I would just allocate a certain amount that that you can afford to lose, of course, but you know a certain amount that you can afford either maybe every week or every month, and you just go in at that particular point regardless. And that is a strategy that's been proven to work pretty well. Um, and so if you're not sure, you just you know you just allocate regardless of what the price is doing you build your stack slowly and steadily and that i think is is a good idea especially for people who aren't sort of who don't want to kind of dive 
head first into crypto and completely immerse themselves in that world because you know that is that is a fairly big commitment if some people just want exposure to bitcoin dollar cost averaging dcaing slowly is is as good a way as any bitcoin in a lot of ways is is inevitable the amount of uh, the amount of adoption and just the fundamentals we see in it but a big surprise to a lot of the world out there blackrock this year filed for an ethereum spot etf does this change your outlook on ethereum at all not really i've always been i've always been bullish on ethereum i think uh, I, I think ethereum is you know it's a very different thing to bitcoin i think this is an important an important thing for 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 people new to the space to understand you know people talk about there being competition between bitcoin and ethereum it's like they're 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 very different things you know ethereum is this ethereum is this network upon which so much of you know this layer one upon which so much of crypto is built um whereas bitcoin at the moment is kind of more that store of value narrative even though we're seeing you know exciting things like ordinals come along and 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 change that change the game a little bit but yeah ethereum has ethereum underpins so much of the crypto ecosystem and even if you don't even if you're not a fan of ethereum even if you prefer some of the other layer one blockchains out there or you're more of an interoperability person you like those layer zero projects like cosmos for example even if you don't like ethereum you can't get away from the fact that a huge amount of the crypto ecosystem is built upon it and yes ethereum still has a lot of work to do yes gas fees are insanely high really it's much cheaper to do this a lot of this stuff on other blockchains sure but the amount of development going on in the ethereum ecosystem is just staggering and so although i think a spot etf is you know is is going to be great news it's obviously going to help with uh, with with eth's price in the long term i think m what's more important is how much is happening on ethereum now recently we've seen network activity on ethereum take a bit of a dip and eth actually went uh, inflationary again it now seems to be picking up again um but there is all this competition from from those other layer ones but i am I, i've been bullish on ethereum's future for as long as i can remember and that hasn't changed it's still got a lot of challenges to do but i mean look last year the, with the merge this huge transition from proof of work to proof of stake the ethereum team pulled that off it worked this massive massive change to the network so i'm confident that they're going to be able to handle all the other um all the other changes, all the other developments, or, you know, further evolution that needs to happen in Ethereum. So, yeah, I think an ETH ETF is interesting, but it doesn't it doesn't change my outlook much for Ethereum. Some people accuse me of being too bullish, so I want you to check me, guy, on this next statement if if I'm out if I'm too far out there. But look, okay. looking at Ethereum this year, compared fundamentally compared to where it was last year, if anything, we've only seen more quality de quality developers flock to the network to build on the network um that's a potential demand shock they need if that popular dap happens they need dap they need ethereum to be able to use the daps yes there are competition there are competitors out there but those really don't shine until the network fees get too high and uh cardanos the solanas that's the biggest advertisement for them oh it's too expensive anyway that's the mm. demand sh supply shock primarily um eth demand or supply shock eth's tokenomics have changed since last cycle too yes in the most bearish days when nothing's happening sometimes it is inflationary but if the, for the first time and this has been different since last cycle the more activity on the network ethereum becomes deflationary hopefully i'm saying these right um and this is in a bear market in a bull market we haven't seen these tokenomics in a bull market What's your projection price-wise, knowing, understanding that for Ethereum next year, let's say if Bitcoin at least gets to 100,000? Yeah, I mean, ETH, ETH uh, tends to lag uh, Bitcoin by, by one cycle. Um, but certainly, as you say, you know, the, the, the tokenomics have, have changed so much. And now, you know, the more, the more Ethereum gets used, the more ETH gets burned, and therefore, you know, the less there is available. So in terms of price, I mean, where are we now? We're sort of hovering around the $2,000 mark. I think we could go to top of the next cycle. I think we could go sort of, I would be targeting 
around 5K sort of minimum. Um, but I think it could get as high as maybe, I'm not sure 10K necessarily. I think it could get as high as maybe 8K uh, at the top of this cycle. Um, one thing I think is worth bearing in mind, though, is, is that even though we've got you know, all this network activity happening on Ethereum, we've also got all these layer twos building on Ethereum as well, which don't necessarily uh, result in the in the burning of ETH. Um, so that could be that could be something to bear in mind. But again, it just it all feeds into just how massive Ethereum is. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm confident that uh, I'm confident that there are you know bright days ahead for 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 Ethereum and um, yeah whether we get to 10k I'm not sure but I think 5k would be fairly not too not too unrealistic. Give me your best advice for crypto investors in 2024. Maybe something you've learned. So this is something I learned from the last cycle, is that if you're if you're wanting to get into crypto and if, or if you're already in crypto let's say and you're wanting to you know you're wanting to get into sort of various coins and tokens um one thing i found really useful was to have multiple exchange accounts um because you know let's say you want to go after a particular maybe a small cap altcoin or something like that that's only going to be available on a handful of exchanges and when things get really crazy uh, you know, signups for these exchanges are going to take a long time. Obviously, it's not as easy as it once was. Pretty much all of them require KYC of some description now. So I think as we get ready for the bull market, I think a really wise move to make is to get yourself signed up on a variety of exchanges, get all that KYC stuff done, make sure you've got your fiat on and off ramps in place, make sure that you can get, you know, dollars, pounds, euros, whatever, into crypto and get them back out again if you need to. Um, and I think do that do that housekeeping. Make sure everything's everything's kind of ready to go because you don't want to be doing that sort of stuff when everything's frothy, when like when you know tens of thousands of people a day are trying to sign up to Coinbase, for instance. You know, they just chances are that sign up process is going to become a lot more drawn out. And you don't want to be sitting there going, I can only get this token on this exchange but they haven't approved my KYC yet and I'm just watching the price go up and to the right. So I think, yeah, that's, that's something I learned from last cycle. Get your, get your house in order, get everything, get your ducks in a row. Um, and that will, that will make the bull run a lot less stressful for you. Sage advice. And also get that hardware wallet, the, the, whatever your hodl position is, put that into cold storage. Something you talk about on your channel all the time. Guy, I yeah. have, I have, yeah. I have my Bitcoin position. I have my ETH position. I'm ready. I want to take a section of my portfolio, put it into some quality altcoins for 2024. I'm putting you on the spot here. What are five mm -hmm. on your radar? Okay, five on my radar. I'm still I'm still very bullish on decentralized storage. I know that's kind of I know that's a little bit dull, perhaps to many people, but data data storage you know the amount of data that we're creating is only getting larger that needs to be stored somewhere i don't think centralized uh, storage solutions like aws and others are the way forward so uh, there are some cool crypto projects that do that um arweave is one that i'm watching closely uh, i have had that as part of my portfolio in the past um and i think that is a good one to consider so that's arweave ar um one that I'm bullish on for a long time, I still hold a lot of Atom. I think the Cosmos ecosystem is great. I think there are some amazing projects building in there. So I like Atom. I like Cosmos. Um, one particular Cosmos project that's caught my eye recently, we've just been working on a review of that, is uh, a cash network, uh, which also is kind of decentralized uh, cloud storage and computing. So those are three to look out for. Then I'm kind of looking, uh, and I think an interesting Ethereum alternative, um, and also something that could be part of the Solana killer narrative. At the moment, Solana seems to be the big uh, Ethereum competitor, if you like. I don't think we can use the term Ethereum killer anymore because that's that's just stupid. Um, Solana seems to be the big competitor. So I think that a big narrative for the 
for the bull cycle could be what are going to be the Solana competitors or the Solana killers, if you like. And I think uh, one that's um, one that's worth looking at in that regard is uh, Near Protocol. I think they've got some amazing tech. One of my colleagues recently uh, interviewed uh, Ilya Polosukin at the uh, Neocon conference in Lisbon, and I was really impressed uh, with him. He's a really smart guy. They seem to have a great team there at Near, some great tech. So Near Protocol, I think, is one to watch. Um, and then like a sector that I'm really, a niche, if you like, that I'm really bullish on and really interested in is GameFi. I think GameFi has the potential to be absolutely huge. Now, there are tons and tons of GameFi projects out there. Um, but one in particular that sort of caught my eye is one called uh, GameSwift. This is a bit of a lower cap one. Um, I'm kind of looking at this at the moment. Um, so this is a sort of GameFi infrastructure project. It's a, it's a modular blockchain that uses um, ZK EVM tech. And I think, you know, when you when you look at the, the GameFi niche as a whole, okay, you can choose to go after particular projects, um, which, you know, might catch on and, and may moon. But I think I think a good bet for, for GameFi as a sector is to look at some of the infrastructure for it. And so that's why I think uh, I think GameSwift could be an interesting one to look at there. So uh, what does it say? Arweave, uh, Cosmos, uh, Near Protocol, Akash, and GameSwift. There you are. I, I love this. And something I love about having you on the channel is you give me high cap and low cap, you know, and stuff for the audience to do more research into. I'll have to look into those, especially the low cap. Two altcoins with, you know, undoubtedly some of the biggest communities are XRP and Cardano. If you have an extra 200 bucks and you can only pick one in terms of an, um, in terms of an investment, do you choose XRP or Cardano? Well, I think what you're asking me is, do I want to be trolled by the Cardano community or by the XRP army? That's that's a good question. Um, well, yeah, I mean, look, I've been really impressed with what Ripple has has achieved recently. You know, Ripple Ripple got a big win for all of crypto uh, recently against the SEC, although that case is still ongoing, I should say. Um, so I'm sort of more in, more inclined towards XRP than I was. Um, having said that, I know there's a lot going on in the Cardano ecosystem. I know there are some really cool projects building there. I met a few people when I was in Singapore a couple of months ago. Uh, I met some people building in the Cardano ecosystem, and I was really taken with how committed they were, how smart they were, how passionate they were. So. I did kind of leave feeling more bullish on Cardano than I have before. So, um, which community? Look, I mean, I've already made myself unpopular with you the said... XRP community in the past. So, heck, I'll just go for Cardano. You know, XR the XRP army already hate me. So, you know. Ooh, let us <laughs> yeah. know your thoughts down below in the comment section, everybody. Um, guy. Or, or don't. Or don't. Or don't. <laughs> We'll leave it up to you. Um, final thoughts about crypto in 2024 for the audience. 2024 is going to be big. Um, crypto is slowly but surely uh, getting past some of these big hurdles. Um, there is there is so much good news on the horizon, um, but we should never forget what's happened in the last couple of years. Uh, we should never rule out the fact that there could be another FTX-like disaster. So although I'm really bullish on the crypto ecosystem over the next 12 months, although I think we're going to see, you know, if if not the bull market actually sort of come to a peak, I think we're probably more likely to see a build up over the year. Um, so enjoy that. Make sure you do your make sure you do your research into projects that you're considering getting into. And as you said earlier, make sure you practice it. basically hope for the best, expect the worst. And I think you should be okay.